This is gonna blow some minds. Huge news in the design world, at least according to homesandgardens.com, Gray is dying. I'm dying. The death of Gray is upon us. And apparently there's a color that's replacing it. Unsure if my graders watching are gonna be that much happier with what's replacing it. But I wanna go through this article with you all today because it does indicate where things are heading. The end of gray is upon us. Oh. I still kind of like gray. This video is all about the new neutral that is taking gray by storm. And yes, it is another neutral paint color. We're not talking about red or pink or gold or chartreuse. I think if you're going to replace gray with something, it has to be somewhat gray-like in one way or another, and it is neutral, a little more desaturated, muted color, which is good because those are the colors that tend to be the most popular and most widely used, especially in the Western world where we're located. So we're about to go through the new neutral that is completely replacing gray. And then we're gonna go through all the different ways that this color can be used in different rooms in your home. So kind of a fun one today. So why don't we let the cat out of the bag? What is this magical new color that is obliterating gray from our psyche, from the design zeitgeist at large? It's beige. Oh <laughs> it's beige. Beige is back. I said it years ago and I continue to say it now, beige has made a comeback as of late. And before you click away with anger, I really think this is a good thing because beige maybe 10, 15 years ago is very different from beige that is existing today. And that's because a lot of the decor has changed and developed and I would say upgraded in really cool and interesting ways. A lot of people just fixate on what they know as beige, which is a builder's beige color maybe that represented a lifeless choice that their stager or real estate agent recommended them because they couldn't think of anything else. They couldn't think of anything better. But now more and more designers and just people at large are really taking beige into very fun directions. So let's go through some examples of how you can use it in your home in really interesting ways to help your place feel contemporary, but also comforting and like an actual home, not a lifeless art gallery or whatever. So first things first, why do I think gray has sort of come out of style for a lot of people? I just think it was so popular that it was doomed to fail because of the fact that it didn't really feel too creative when you used it. It was just what everyone was using at the time. And also people started to realize that when you use cooler colors in larger amounts in your home, it tends to make your house feel cool which is good and bad. Cool because it's trendy and you know, everyone thinks it's really hip, but also cool in the sense of it feeling cold. Not so much warm and cozy, more so sleek and elegant and all that. I don't know if that's what you necessarily want in your home. After a long day of work, are you trying to feel hip or you just wanna flop out and relax? And beige is the natural progression from that because what it does is it has warmth to it, it feels a little more comfortable and it's still neutral which I think is an important thing for a lot of people because you don't want to necessarily mess around with bright colors that maybe you'll get tired of in six months or so. Beige does have a timelessness to it. And the only way you would get sick of it is if you were craving more color. And if you were wanting more color, then you would have painted with color to begin with. But for everyone else that just wants a neutral canvas, clean slate type of color on your walls that maybe you don't have to worry about for a few years, beige I do find tends to be a great choice that can stand the test of time. And then you can change out some of your decor pieces and your decorations and all that, rather than feeling like you have to paint your walls again to revitalize your space and transform the whole vibe and the flow. Now, right before we get to the different rooms themselves, I think there's an important distinction here that needs to be made. When we're talking about beige as a paint color, we're not necessarily thinking about walls exclusively. In fact, it's the opposite. So a lot of these examples that we're gonna go through they have off-white walls, so very stark and clean. And then beige happens to be incorporated in the accents, in the furniture, maybe in the cabinets, spoiler alert. And we also play with a few different beiges throughout. So ones that are a little more gray leaning, maybe a few that have a touch of a greeny aspect to them, maybe even a grugy sort of brown red based gray beige kind of fusion. Like there's a lot you can do here that isn't gray, all sort of warmer leaning in general. So the first up is the kitchen, and this is a big one here. This is not a pure white kitchen. 
It is using beige, or you can also use cream in the same respect if you wanna go with something lighter. And what's nice about going with beige on your kitchen cabinets is it fits along with the light kitchen model, but it's no longer just a stark white that really is void of any color. There is some depth there. And if you do have a lot of natural wood and you have more rustic elements throughout, this is a great, great choice that will coordinate so nicely. And even if you do wanna switch out those rustic elements, those beige cabinets should still stand the test of time because they're not really going to make a massive statement, have a huge bright color that is kind of one note. It is definitely a light neutral at the end of the day. And people tend to gravitate towards lighter cabinets anyway because they make your kitchen feel more airy and spacious. If it were me, I would probably start with a more settled or toned down version of beige maybe a grayish, so a little bit of gray mixed in just to sort of soften the coloration and the hue itself. Because if you do decide to change up your design, you don't wanna feel limited by whatever you painted your cabinet with undertone wise. If you went way into sort of green undertone territory, I mean, I would love that, but it may not suit you a few years from now when you start using more reds or whatever the case may be. Or maybe you wanna go coastal a little bit later on then that green maybe would work, but it might not as well. By going with something softer and neutral in your beige cabinets, I think you'll have a little more longevity there because you wanna make your kitchens last as long as possible because it is an expensive, very pricey renovation, even if you're just respraying them. So choose wisely there. Beige in the living rooms is a little bit of a different story and one that doesn't really involve any paint whatsoever. You may be looking at the walls here and think, this doesn't look beige at all. Well, it's not. It's pretty much an off-white that they've painted their walls with. The beige is in the form of their couch, the flooring, the rugs, the tables, basically everything else here is some form of beige. And the reason it works is because there's contrast with the walls. The walls are much brighter and whiter and lighter. So it allows these warmer beigey elements to really pop in the space. You could do it the flip side, I guess, if you picked a beige color for the walls and then you have much lighter or much darker furniture and accessories to help contrast things. But this is what I see more often because if you go to any big department stores or furniture stores, a lot of these warm tones are going to be everywhere. So if you're buying and you're incorporating these types of things, you don't wanna have a completely monochromatic beige space in your living room either. So having some contrast on the walls, whether you go with a clean white like this or a much darker vibrant color as well, if you wanna go maybe a little more boho or maximalist, that's an option too. But just don't overdo it, in my opinion. When it comes to beige in bedrooms, I'm not a huge fan of beige wall colors in bedrooms. I think beige is nice because it is a neutral color that can connect the dots from space to space. Once you get to areas like bedrooms, that's where you wanna have a little more fun with your paint colors specifically. The only beige that I like to incorporate in a bedroom is wood, like wood furniture or anything that's sort of an accessory, not the main star of the show. I wanna have fun with my bedroom colors because it's a sectioned off part of your home that you can shut the door on if you don't wanna see it all the time. And it's also a good chance for the owner of that bedroom to express themselves creatively with color. That's what I like to say. You don't want a boring beige color in a bedroom. It's just not gonna inspire you. It's not really gonna relax you. I mean, it might if you're a beige-aholic. Same thing goes for bathrooms. This is a nice looking bathroom, right? It's a very neutral, soft, grayish color. Not necessarily a pure beige. It is a little more desaturated. And I think it works in this example, but it's another one of those things where why not have a bit of fun in your bathroom? I guess the one way that grayish or beige could be relaxing in this case, which I think you wanna feel in your bathroom while you're taking a bath in your freestanding tub, nice. Maybe the grayish is just so not there that you can kind of just melt away and you're not really focusing on your walls at all. That could be a perk. It's also working with the flooring because you have that sort of same coloration mixed in with the tile and the off-white. It works for me. It's clean, it's concise, just not necessarily inspirational or spa-like, which I usually like in my bathrooms, but. What about entryways? So if you're lucky enough to have a nice little foyer in the front of your home, that's normally a place where you want something of intrigue because it's essentially the first impression that your guests get when they come into your home. So if all they see is beige, that's not really exciting, right? I suppose if you are going in that direction, then maybe that's just your hallway color because you want something really 
welcoming, cozy, soft and neutral that sort of carries through from your entryway to your hallways and all that. I get that. I actually really like the example here on this website because what they did was they have this very soft muted off-white beigey cream. It almost looks like it has a slight green undertone here, but whatever. And you got some beige flooring as well, obviously the lighter woods. But what really stands out is that black trim on the doors and that beautiful woodwork. That's what really makes it intriguing to me. So maybe that color on the walls is what's carrying through, but because it's the entryway, you want something else there to really capture your audience's eye. And that's what the black trim does. Very, very cool. Beige in your laundry room. I think here, you know, you can just continue your kitchen cabinet beige color that you used and just put it in the cabinets in your laundry room. I think that's a great source of continuity. And again, it's a color that hopefully won't go out of style for you in the near future. White is probably the most timeless cabinet color, but beige isn't too far off because it's another lighter neutral color that's passive and just a little more interesting to me. Beige in a dining room. That's a bit of a stretch for me. Maybe your curtains can be some sort of creamy color to sort of contrast the more exciting color that you decide in your dining room. You don't need to go crazy bold, but might as well have some fun one way or another. Whatever that means to you. If it's just a slight deviation, maybe a slightly smoky, silvery blue color, greeny color, all that's fine. Don't paint your dining room walls beige, please. Live a little. Beige in a pantry? I don't even have a pantry, so. <laughs> Okay, I mean, maybe this applies to some of you, but I would just see my pantry as an extension of my kitchen. So whatever I decide to do there, I'll probably just continue in there. No need to change it up. Beige in a powder room? No, no beige in a powder room. <laughs> Okay, because even more so than your dining room, your powder room is like the showpiece of your home that is really sectioned off on its own. So I guess the example that they use here is the beige paneling and that textured beige. That's fine with me. If you are gonna go with something as passive as cream or beige, especially in like a powder room, then use texture to enhance it. Texture will really add some character to it, some visual intrigue. I don't know if I'm convinced there. Beige in a sunroom? What kind of houses are these, man? I don't have a sunroom as well. I just sort of see this as an extension of your living room or your family room. In the example here, again, they use like an off-white on the walls. You got some beige accents mixed throughout. I think a sunroom though, maybe beige could be good on the walls because of all that natural light coming in. If you pick a white, in that situation, it may be too vibrant and too bright. So by going with a muted beigey color of some sort, it'll help absorb some of that light and not reflect all of it back. So it might tone down the whole look and make it feel a little more relaxed and comfortable. But yeah, shout outs to you if you have a sunroom. I mean, that's pretty cool. So for those of you who hate gray, is beige an okay replacement or does that make you just as mad? <laughs> Let me know down below. This beige is extremely popular and very, very comfortable to use based on my experience. 